I have been struggling. I'm feeling blue. Pretty, pretty, pretty blue for the past two years and mostly just today. I have been struggling many sleepless nights, tossing and turning, living in a state of perpetual dread for humankind. These are weighty existential issues that I have in my little pea brain, which is why I've decided to talk about our next fashion aesthetic two years late, an aesthetic that invites one to escape from current events, invites one to toss away their phone to unplug and rollick in the field and bake bread and forage for forest berries and mushrooms because, because you'll need it. You'll need the mushrooms. My name is Teresa and this is cottage core. Cottage core. Cottagecore is an escapist aesthetic dominated by meadows, baby goats, and teacups. It also goes by its lesser known title, farm core, country core. It's a romanticized interpretation of agricultural Western life, all centered on the idea of simple living and embracing nature, living in nature, harmony in nature. It celebrates self-sufficiency, romanticizes domestic farm labor, DIYs, lots of DIYs. It romanticizes the English, Edwardian, and Victorian countryside. Midwestern prairie life. And the word that I can't pronounce for the life of me because my mouth doesn't work that way, it romanticizes rural, 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 rural. This word, it romanticizes this word, country life. It's doilies, it's snails, it's faded cabbage rose wallpaper accenting your French country living room. No better yet, family room because we don't want a sterile living room here. We want a cozy family room. It's baking bread all on your lonesome. Maybe you even beekeep for your own homegrown honey. It's jam making. It's reading an aged, copy of Anne of Green Gables while sipping your lavender chamomile tea with a dollop of homegrown honey. It's scones with homemade strawberry jam that you jarred yourself and clotted cream. The cream came from your own cows. It's frolicking through your barn and plucking up speckled eggs from your own chicken coop. It's snowy white eyelet blouses with soft worn laundered car cardigans. It's your laundry strung up on a line fluttering in the breeze. It's a golden sunset, the light hitting you just so on your beautiful, sun-kissed, dewy, dewy, clean makeup skin. It's long, luxurious hair washed only in natural soap made out of sea salt, dry blueberries, and any ingredients you have in your farm, in the Cotswolds, or in Montana. It's living like you are from the 19th century, it's wistful longing for the simple past. It's a simple life, far removed from technology, from your cell phone, from social media, from likes, from views, from trolls, from politics, from current events, from modern day unpleasantness. It is cottagecore, a TikTok phenomenon during the lockdown of 2020. Times were, uh, were pretty crappy back then. It's no better now. Reality is pretty dreary. A recurring theme with fashion trends is that you are funneled into fantasy by fashion. With everything so cynical, with people acting like fools, you want something warm and fuzzy and simple and nostalgic. A nice warm hug under a golden sun with waist-high wheat tickling your bare forearms and your bare ankles. You're wearing a sustainable cotton sundress with a square 
milkmaid collar and puffy sleeves, and your face is clean of ostentatious makeup. You have dewy bee stung lips, which are in no way plumped up by lip filler. And that, my friends, is a cottage core in a nutshell. But we're not skimming the surface of this aesthetic. We're diving deep, but not too deep because we don't want to get lost. We're not dipping the tip. We're just getting waist deep, much like the wheat in the fields that you're frolicking in as a cottage core aficionado. Moving on, that jiggled there. So even before cottagecore became such a phenomenon, I became aware of it in 2019. Around that time, I very much coveted the Reformation look. The Reformation look banked on dead stock fabric, dainty little floral prints, puff sleeves, the low cut square milkmaid neckline, the spicy milkmaid look. The milkmaid look could go one of two ways. It could be very sister wife or it could be it could be spicy and they went for a spicy milkmaid because you have that low cut neckline. So if you have a bountiful chest area, you have the milkmaid cleavage, you have the pirate wench cleavage. Unfortunately, most of their models had the A cut, the flat chest, the itty bitty titties. They usually paired these cottage core dresses with a spicy thigh slit, which wouldn't really be practical if you're frolicking through the fields because there's a lot of bugs in the meadows. Thigh slit is just inviting a tick to just bite you in the crotch, inviting little nettles into one's nether regions. The Reformation seasons of dress was not really practical for rural living. It was really for for the career city woman to feel like she lives in the country. For 200 plus dollars per gown, there's nothing country about this. The Reformation dress, that was my first taste of the cottage core aesthetic. And during 2019, I uh, was introduced to gingham. I didn't buy any gingham, but I was certainly aware of it. The picnic aesthetic was a prologue to cottage and around the same time, I was really into watching domestic Korean housewife content on YouTube. I was really into this channel, and I still am, but she doesn't post as much anymore. I was really into this channel called Hagrin Doll. She had a very aesthetically pleasing ASMR domestic home channel where she goes about her day in a very aesthetic way, and her whole apartment is decorated in a Japandi, that's Japanese, scan the minimalistic way with beiges and whites and everything is just clean. She makes bento boxes. She makes her own kimchi. She, she makes Korean air fryer recipes. And she does this all without speaking a word with soothing contemporary, I think Christian rock-esque music in the background. The whole vibe of her channel and other channels like her, there's this entire niche of Korean and Japanese homemakers who film their day and their cooking and their DIY knitting, jam making, crocheting in a very aesthetic, cinematic, cottagecore way. And that is the vibe of cottagecore. Before I even knew what cottagecore was, before we labeled it with a term, I think I was actually deep into the cottagecore aesthetic. Deep in, in terms of the media I consumed, but not in the clothes I wear. That's something you have to realize about me here. I love a lot of aesthetics. I love reading about, I love diving deep, I love researching a broad range of fashion aesthetics, but I don't necessarily wear them. There was a long period when I was the self-proclaimed queen of twee and I had flouncy dresses, but now I'm comfortably living in my adulthood with my tomboy t-shirt and my worn out sneakers. Basically, I want to dress like I did when I was 12 and 13. That's my goal. Comfort really is what we're after in cottagecore. Comfort, simplicity, DIY in an aesthetic way. You can't be comfortable in a sloppy way. And now, the visuals. The visuals. I'm about to get a little excited, so hold on to your butts. I am going... <laughs> I am going to paint for you a picture of the cottagecore aesthetic. Just imagine I am Jackson Pollock flicking paint on your face because your face is my canvas. And I swear I'm not drunk. 
because that's coffee in my mug. That, it's not Irish coffee, it's just, it's just coffee. I don't drink, but you can. Sometimes I think you need to be drunk to watch this. So what do we have in the cottagecore aesthetic? A naturalistic color palette. We're talking light green foliage. We wanna mimic the trees, the grass, the moss. A naturalistic color palette. We don't want no bright pink. We need a beige browns, subdued yellows, not loud yellow, not highlighter yellow. We want subdued yellow. We don't want the yellow version of me. We want subdued yellows. Natural wood, we don't want no particle board, but I think that's all you have to settle with because during the pandemic, wood was super expensive. So you want particle board, but that got to be a little expensive too. We want some natural stone. We want some reeds. We want compass grass, bamboo. Those are the materials in a cottagecore visual. Flowers, little garlands, little daisies. We love a good flower crown. You're at a medieval May festival, dancing around with your flower crown. It's basically like a scene out of Midsommar, but without the horror. Whatever happened in that movie, it was pretty disturbing. Just take that out. Leave the visuals, the flower crown, the soft, preferably white, virginal dresses, dancing around the maypole, not just dancing, skipping around the maypole. The cottage core aesthetic is very joyful and very floral. We want mushrooms, preferably a red toadstool, hold stool, mushroom, flowers of any vein, the small dainty flowers. We like a nice strawberry pattern. The Larika Matashi strawberry dress. And a common theme I see, which has been adopted by all the other retailers recently, a girl in a pretty linen dress, linen's a big thing, strolling slowly in a waist high meadow. Sometimes she's laying down in the meadow. Usually it's laying down like sprawled, not on her face. I'm also thinking about the Porter Robinson album, his Nurture, which came out in 2021. The album cover is Porter laying down in a field. That picture is so cottagecore. It's like the epitome of the Gen Z personality. Usually the cottagecore aesthetic doesn't really involve a lot of men. That is why cottagecore aesthetic is actually very popular with the LGBTQ community. It's actually very popular with the L part is very feminine, hyper feminine, and you're not like insulted by the alpha male. On one spectrum, we have cottage core, but at the same time, the rise of the alpha male content, never will the two aesthetics meet. I don't know if the alpha male is an aesthetic. They do have an aesthetic. And let me know if you want me to cover the alpha male aesthetic because I, I have some thought and it's not good. I'll be as friendly as possible. Hopefully it's just a conversation between us, my viewers, those with reason because I don't think any alpha males will ever click on my channel and watch my videos because I do not lure them with images of NFTs, with the Bored Ape Yacht Club, with Bitcoin, with the big glorious face of Elon Musk. And my image alone does not exactly entice an alpha male. I'm not their type. The glasses itself is an alpha male repellent. We have a nice picket country fences. We like a nice clothesline with your linens, sustainable dresses flapping in the wind. We gotta have the cottage. Where else would you live in your cottage core world? We like to have nice picnics in the meadow, picnics in the forest. But as for cottage, we like a nice tutor, a cottage in the Cotswolds. Sunset in a lavender field in Provence, France. Even though you kind of like unplugged from the internet and unplugged from social media, you still have to have your, your photos. Maybe you don't take your photos with an iPhone, but you bring vintage camera. Maybe you bring a disposable camera. You're going all in on the simplistic lifestyle of cottage core. And speaking of nature, you have to have a presence in the natural world. You're part of nature. You're not shaping nature. You're not deforesting the rainforest and you care 
about the environment. You are a tree hugger. You care about the environment. You care about global warming. All your chickens have to be free range. They're not in cages. They're, they lay their eggs anywhere they want. And then you just find them as you forage in the meadow. You know, your cows are free range. You forage for everything you eat. You're going back to the hunter gatherer mentality. If you live in the Cotswolds, you have to have a sheep, a flock of sheep. You dress up like little Bo Peep, but like a little spicier because you're dressed in a reformation version of little Bo Peep's outfit, except that your milkmaid collar is a little tighter to, you know, there's there's a bustier situation going on down there. It's in a sustainable eyelet lace and you have a spicy thigh slit. Gotta elongate your legs and you really can't do that with a full skirt. So it's like a spicy thigh slit. You are definitely wearing an espadrille and you are leading your flock of sheep through the fields in the Cotswolds. You have a farmhouse style aesthetic, but we're not talking about like a Chip and Joe kind of farmhouse style with like ship laugh and the, the word art, live, laugh, love. Maybe you have that. Maybe if you're cottage core with a touch of grandma core, maybe you have that. Maybe that's cool now. You definitely have twee, dainty, cute decorations. You like a good knickknack. You'll definitely have a fireplace because you know, the hearth is the center of the home. And on your fireplace mantle, you have tiny little knickknacks, the wood carving of a robin, a tiny little bird's nest with two robin blue speckled eggs in it. And you have doilies, definitely doilies. There's doilies on your coffee table, on your side table, on your kitchen table. You have either gingham floral or just a plain rustic beige linen set. Obviously your kitchen is is where you spend most of your time. <laughs> You're back in the kitchen. You've just set feminism back 70 years. In your kitchen, you'll have a cast iron pan, a cast iron crock pot. If you are a wealthy cottage court maiden, you will have a le crusset, le crusat, whatever. I don't know how to say it. Le crusat, le crusset. This thing, you would have this brand and the colors would complement your home. You wouldn't have very wild colors. You definitely have like an autumnal set of Le Crusat stoneware mugs. You love to dabble in preserves. Let me tell you, you go out into your bramble patch and you pick your blueberries, your blackberries, your huckleberries, and you come home with your berries, mind you, in your, your apron, because you, you may have a basket, but it just looks better if you have it in your apron. And then you come home and you mash up these berries in your kitchen and you preserve these jams for the winter. You also bake pies with, you are very much into berries because you're a forager. You are a foraging fool. You're a foraging fool. And you better believe the cottage core maiden has a tea set. She has the best goddamn tea set in the county. You don't just like have tea in a tea bag. You have loose leaf tea that you brew in your cute kitschy tea set that you serve with your jam, your jam spread on your homemade sourdough bread. You are a domestic goddess. Oh, why am I getting so excited? I'm only using low tier YouTube approved profanity. We talked about jams. <laughs> you are a furious maker of jams. You also bake pies. You also make a nice fluffy, Fluffy Victoria sponge. Your Victoria sponge is like the best goddamn sponge in your town, in your country house. And it would garner you a handshake from Paul Hollywood. And you better believe you watch the Bake Off. That's all you do. You live the Bake Off. And you also bake other forms of rustic cakes. I don't know what those rustic cakes are, but they sound delicious. The Victorians like to call themselves naturalists. So you're a naturalist. You may dabble in botany. You have a green thumb, probably have a nice little garden out back. You might have a hydrangea bush. You, you might also cultivate a lot of herbs. You're an herbalist and you very much enjoy a vintage botanical illustration. You know, like the illustration with a poppy flower cut open to show it's pistols and stamens with labels. You know all about that because you're a botanist. I took a botany class and entailed a lot of walking. Little known fact about me, I think in a former video, I declared myself a biologist. I have a BS in biology. I definitely have a lot of BS. Does that qualify me as a naturalist? 
perhaps it does. I'm your resident biologist and naturalist. And at night, you like a good candle. Perhaps you make your own candle. Obviously, you would make your own candle. You have berry scented candles from your berries, from your honey. By the way, you're also a successful beekeeper. You harvest your own honey. You have your own beekeeping outfit. You like to gather up little flowers from your foray into the meadows. You gather up your little wild flowers. You weave them into a flower crown, or you like to press them in your big tome of botanical illustrations. And you also use these flower pressings in your candles. So you make great candles. Anthropology candles have nothing on you. You are anthropology. The cottage core maiden is a very impressive woman. And at night, she reads by candlelight. She would read Anne of Green Gables, Heidi, Withering Heights the tales of Peter Rabbit. And sometimes you would also like to do a little bit of self-reflection. You would keep a gratitude journal. You would probably own a quill, perhaps a um, an ink pot. The cottage core maiden. She likes a nice throwback to the Edwardian times, maybe Victorian times, the prairie dress. We are talking about a square milkmaid collar with puffy sleeves. The volume of the puff really depends on you. Do you like it low puff, mid puff, ultra puff? It's up to you. If you're anything like Anne Shirley, you want the puffiest freaking sleeves in Prince Edward Island. As I've mentioned before, the cottage core maiden, she has a busy, busy life. She's making her own tonic candles, foraging for hours on end, and she's baking her own bread. She's preserving her own jams. She's having conversations with woodland creatures. She has a bunny in her apron pocket. She's a busy girl. She's a whimsical lady. She is a, she's kind of like a moonbeam. It's hard to pin down. She loves to dress in light colors, white snowy linen, dusty rose, a sage green. There was a time fairly recently when everything I bought was in sage green. If it was socially acceptable, I would smother myself in that color. I want to look like a fresh plant that you plucked right from the meadows and pressed in your book. She's a sustainable girl. She likes to thrift for gingham blouses. She likes to make her own clothes. She likes to go on eBay and buy up vintage sewing patterns, the gunny sack sewing patterns from the 70s. The linen dress. She likes a nice long linen dress. Seersucker is also a staple of her wardrobe. Gingham, obviously taking inspiration from the lid of her jam jars, dainty florals. She's like the living interpretation of a pressed Victorian flower. The cottage core maiden is not above turning a potato sack into a work of fashion art, but I've not seen anybody wear a potato sack yet. She likes a nice pattern of insects on her apron, <laughs> maybe some kittens. The cottage core maiden and the twee girl very similar interests. In fact, if it pleases the jury, I would like to suggest the twee girl of the 2010s, she has evolved into the cottage core maiden. How's that for a hypothesis? Speaking of mushrooms, eat your mushrooms, saute them, make a nice chicken marsala with your mushrooms, but don't get into the other mushrooms. I don't even know what these other mushrooms look like and I don't really know how you recreate with them. I watched this behind the music about Papa Roach who originated from Vacaville, California. And I think the leader of the band, he wrote their famous song because he had a friend who recreated with some shrooms and was never the same again. So that's a tangent. Papa Roach has nothing to do with cottage core other than the connection of mushrooms. Don't recreate with the fungi. Don't recreate with them because it could be the last recreation you ever do. Because of that, behind the hit song documentary, that is the only reason that I know of Vacaville. And I did pass by Vacaville once on the train. I saw a lot of um, unfortunate people without homes living under the bridge. The cottage core wardrobe, 90% dresses. Then you may have a wide leg flowy linen pant, kind of like 
a coastal grandma because you're in the country a overall. Oh yes, the overall. Your hair is long, flowy, perfectly curled, braided. You might want to shield your face from the sun with a straw boater hat. Sometimes you'll just go barefoot because you're one with nature. Nothing feels better than feeling the grass upon your bare feet, your dirty bare feet. Just think, what would Anne of Green Gables wear? A leather lace-up boot or a espadrille, a wicker sandal, a wicker wedge, maybe a Hirachi sandal. You do own a corset because you want that feminine silhouette. And some of you may even go back to the 50s and wear that 50s housewife dress. From my viewings of the Korean homemaking ASMR channel, Hagen Doll would always have a beige linen apron, flowy, boxy dress. And then she would always have these slip-on sandals and she'd show her feet and walk around on her birchwood floor. Very aesthetic. The westernized version of the Korean ASMR housewife. There's this one creator and she lives in the country. She lives in like a prairie style abode. She makes her own jam jars. I've only seen one or two videos of that, but there is a plethora of contents of the cottage core aesthetic. It's very quiet, very soothing. There's a gentle cinematic shots of rain falling on a tree leaf. The pitter patter of rain on on your windowsill gathering eggs and like the sound of eggs as you gather them in a bowl. The complete opposite of, of my life. I can't cook to save my life. I could boil water in a kettle and I could pour it on my shin ramen. I have a Costco card. I know how to use it and I know how to use it to buy pre-microwavable tikka marsala. So I have some final thoughts about the cottage core aesthetic. Very beautiful, very tranquil, serene. It's dopamine dressing for those in hard times. This is a natural medicine to your blues. I love fashion, but I'm not a designer girl. I, I like money. So that's why I'm not a designer girl, but I do like a, a good old Navy haul, a good old Navy haul paired with a Rakuten discount paired with a 50% off sale. You've seen the commercials of all their models dancing in their cottage core S dresses. We've seen cottage core dresses in Target for the design. They're on the right track. There's something missing because there's a fine line between that aesthetic cottage core look where it's attractive and hyper feminine and looking like a sister wife. And usually the cut of the sister wife dress is the high neckline. So I think like what makes a good cottage core dress is in the neckline. We like a, a nice square neckline and we like a nice fitted bodice. It's like the milkmaid, but with a little bit of spice. Reformation does it well, but they're super expensive. I don't know why Old Navy doesn't just the look of the Reformation silhouettes because it's kind of like they're trying to, but they haven't gone all the way. Maybe there's a copyright problem. Cottage core of not done right can very much veer into sister wife territory. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If there's sister wives out there watching this, there's nothing wrong with your lifestyle choices. We're not asking you to um, to run, run as fast as you can. It's a lifestyle choice and we're not here to judge, but just ask yourself this. Why is there one of him and like four of you? Wouldn't you want brother husbands? I don't understand polygamy. If there's any polygamists out there, feel free to enlighten me in the comments below. So that's that's all I have for you today. We've talked a lot about foraging in the woods. We've talked about mushrooms. We've talked about Papa Roach for some reason. And we've talked about Vacaville from the second that I saw it on the train. To, I didn't sense a lot of cottage core vibes to it. I did see a lot of people camping by the train tracks and those poor souls, they did not look aesthetic. Maybe the flock of cottage core maiden would like to go there and donate your um, your homemade blueberry jams to these unfortunate souls. And if there's any polygamists out there, maybe you would like to um, take them into your compound and give them shelter because we all help each other in this cruel, cruel world. If you like what you heard so far, if you made it this far, then please, please subscribe to this channel. If you are entertained in any way, hit that like button, hit that bell notification. That would really help this mug appear in your, your feed. So that's it. That's all I have to say. Until next time, I remain yours truly. You know my name. Let's not get redundant here. Good night, good luck.